Yeah, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, Sachin Devle, I'm representing uh, Black & Veatch. Uh, as Black & Veatch, uh, we are a global organization, and we are currently working on many projects which are in US, Canada, Chile, uh, and even uh, projects in Canada where we are doing the feed studies. Uh, the projects are basically into green hydrogen. We are even doing a 220 megawatt electrolyzer EPC, uh, where the hydrogen will be then stored in salt cabins and then utilized in uh, combined cycle projects in California. Uh, coming to India, I think uh, the National Hydrogen Mission has been announced, I think 5 million uh, tons per annum uh, by 2030. Uh, what we see in India is, I think there's a lot of uh, action on, you know, from various developers. Uh, the right step, which is we have seen, and even in the last uh, two days, I think there are a lot of pilot plants. Uh, you know, the pilot plants may be into hydrogen refueling stations. The other hydrogen uh, pilot plants are there. Some are at small nature. So some of these pilot plants can even use gray hydrogen so that you know the, all the equipments in that stage are getting tested. There are uh, currently what we feel is even on the product side, on the compressors or on the pipelines, when it comes to hydrogen, uh, there are no proper suppliers, so no proper manufacturing capacities. Uh, economies of scale will definitely govern. However, green hydrogen uh, in a longer range, uh, what we feel is maybe it is only possible after 2028 or 2029. Uh, everything is depending on the commercial viability. There is a lot of funding available, but the, the projects will not pick up unless you know the, there is a merit in uh, the current uh, 1 or 1 $1.5 dollar per kg of uh, 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 of grey hydrogen compared to the green hydrogen which is over five dollars. So I think uh, the, 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 all the electrolyzer manufacturers uh, definitely have to step in and once there is a large manufacturing capability in India which I think the government is promoting through PLI and other schemes but uh, you know the, the projects in US and Europe are taking off because I think there are a lot of uh, higher incentives maybe three dollar per kg and even uh, in Europe, there are uh, good incentives. In India, as such, I think we feel uh, we are still at the nascent stage. It may take maybe one, two years to get this, all the manufacturers in place and the developers who are planning. I think uh, the, the FIDs will only happen after maybe one or two years, depending on the commercial viabilities. And once the few initial projects start, I think uh, there will be off-take agreements which will be uh, having either in Europe or uh, in South Korea and once based on these agreements I think uh, the project will be decided whether it is at a coastal location or whether it is at a hinterland and the other key parameter which we are seeing is uh, we are talking of green okay and everybody is having solar and uh, wind generation to increase so today we are around 116 to 120 gigawatts of solar and wind generation capacity, which is around 27% of our overall capacity. Now the future plan for all this green, you know, we are talking of 500 gigawatts of solar and wind. And uh, even though we have the transmission, the huge transmission in India, either through power grid, the central or the state, I think the, 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 uh, the variability which will get created because of the solar and wind, okay, and then you have this day ahead schedules where you have to commit maybe the next day what is the going to be the renewable profile. I think the grid needs to be resilient. And uh, today that grid is not resilient. We have seen in even uh, cases in California where there is a grid collapse. So what we feel is, I think uh, there should be a lot, uh, lot of investments which we, sh we should go to uh, build the grid which is quite large in terms of the grid resilience so that the renewable power can be taken because the generation will be at one place, the green hydrogen, but the power it will depend on the resources and the projects where they are located so that you know you get a good uh, resource availability and overall CUF. The other factor which we see is uh, since it's RTC power in India, I think uh, battery storage is very important to bring that uh, renew, uh, around the clock power or you know, so either battery storage or pumped hydro which is being developed, but both has its own, you know, it's quite costly battery power. And uh, the other thing is if it's pumped hydro, it can be on a, only in a particular location and the schedules are too large. So I think what we feel is 
there are a uh, lot of uh, uh, integration issues when it comes to green hydrogen projects immediately. The government is taking right steps, but however, for larger plants, because the pilot plants will only be in few kgs per hour, but when you talk of you know, 1 million tons per annum projects, I think, and, and we need multiple of such projects. Uh, we see that uh, there should be a lot of uh, integration which should happen. There should be a lot of investments in R&D. And uh, only then, maybe uh, once the commercial projects happen, uh, we feel that the, the pricing will come down. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. I think one, I would like to add to your uh, point of reducing the cost of uh, hydrogen production based upon the scale at which the electrolyzers will be produced. Uh, as I mentioned in earlier discussion, the numbers which have been worked out by European Union and we in Niti Aayog also have verified, the scale of production of uh, electrolyzers has to be in the region of 5 terawatt installed capacity. And the cost should come down to about $130 per kilowatt. If that is the kind of a scenario you can produce with the PLI schemes what we have today. And if the power cost, as I mentioned earlier to when we were discussing, comes down to about $20 per megawatt hour, then you will have the cost of green hydrogen, so-called green hydrogen, about one to one point one dollars per kg. That is the kind of scale we have to do the kind of extension of that. So we'll have to look at uh, whether we are in the right direction or is it feasible or not. Second point is when we have a target that we'll make five million tons of green hydrogen by uh, 2030. Has anybody realized what are the kind of resources needed for doing this? If you look at again numbers, you will need about 267 gigawatts of solar power. And if you have to have that, you need land mass of about 160,000 hectares. And if you need to know what is the kind of water consumption, it will be billion liters of water per day to meet that requirement. So when you add up all these numbers and even then, even then with 267 gigawatts of solar energy, what you mentioned about the grid stability because of the vagaries of the renewable power, the grid will not be decarbonized to more than 60 to 70 percent. That means 30 to 40 percent of the grid is still with carbon. So now if you attach the color to hydrogen so produced, will again be a question. That means, this was a Bloomberg report one time back, which came out about two years back, which indicated that unless you have grid decarbonized to 99%, you cannot say that our hydrogen is green. So I think these figures are very important for you, because you mentioned that we can yeah, bring that. thank you. I would just like to add, you know, as, uh, you know, Everybody says, and that's the fact that the renewable power constitutes around 60 to 65 percent of the overall green hydrogen. And after last 10 years, you know, the renewable prices have dropped, and today, uh, you know, we are at maybe 2.1 rupees for solar. Now, if this constitutes 60 percent, and if you still want to go down on the solar uh, pricing overall, uh, you know, all the good resource sites have already been developed. So what remains is the land which is more marshy. You know, you have to have more civil foundations into it. Uh, the cost of solar cells, even though, uh, you know, today it's at rock bottom, maybe uh, 14 uh, uh, cents per watt peak. Uh, it all, it's fluctuating. Even though there are a lot of Indian developers who, who are now going into manufacturing of solar cells. Really, whether this power cost from 2.1 rupees will come down to 1.5, you know, it has to be really seen because it's really at a rock bottom currently. So, you know, there are a lot of complexities when we talk of uh, one dollar, I think, uh, as an as a economical price for more commercial projects. But definitely there should be some premium, some carbon tax, which should uh, be there in the, and the policy should take care of it. Thank you.